Welcome everyone! Welcome to another preview. This is Metal Canyon and we'll be previewing um, Frontier Pilot Simulator. If, uh, if you watch my channel then you might remember me already previewing this game before when it was still at the Kickstarter um, stage. Unfortunately their Kickstarter failed which I'm really sad and disappointed about actually because I think this is one of the sort of most interesting and um, games with the most potential really in the past few years. I I really enjoyed the tech demo and now the game is actually the developers have gone ahead and have released the game in early access on Steam so you can actually buy it for the full price I believe it's like 24 euros or something which is quite a lot for the current state of the game but you know as I said uh, they are determined to finish this game and it's 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 just it's just bloody amazing this game I know I've said it right at the beginning now so that doesn't leave a lot for the rest of the preview but basically if you haven't seen my preview what this game is is um, a departure from the usual you know oh I'm a I'm a soldier and I destroy everything no it is a bit like Privateer, maybe, the old game Privateer, except that it happens in... Oh, where's my UI? What's going on? That's not good. I think... Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. There we go. Sorry about that. That's because I believe F12 actually gets rid of the UI. Um, so, yeah, you're not a soldier. You're a... Uh, you're a captain of a trading ship, and this is actually the upgraded ship right now. Let me just uh, move around here. Uh, we've got some bad weather at the moment. So yeah, this is a game about running a ship, a trading ship, on a frontier planet. So, uh, you know, civilization is only sort of taking place here. Whoa, this weather is quite severe here. I want to park on this trade hub here, but uh, to do that I need to realign myself. Um, so let me, let me try to do that. Now this game really reminds me of Firefly for some reason, because, you know, Firefly was also about the frontier a little bit, about being a, you know, a free pilot, trading as you would, possibly smuggling, I don't know if there's gonna be smuggling in this game, but there you go, this is how I need to be positioned. Of course, on the ground, let's shut off the engines, on the ground you can also taxi, like this, there we go this will be all right I just have to stop and I can enter the uh, the trade menu now let me refuel my ship there we go now I am using the controller for this I would absolutely recommend a controller for this because there is a lot of very fine movement you need to do with an analog stick I have a joystick here as well but I don't know if it would be uh, that useful. I do have a throttle on the joystick, but I just find the uh, triggers on the controller much nicer to use. So, um, yeah, controller definitely recommended for this. So anyway, yeah, we are a pilot, pilot of a trade ship. I can also shut off the, uh, the, the weather conditions if I want with the Y button like this. So you can see that there's various, you know, wind strengths the green stuff is the uh the least no the blue stuff is the least strong i believe then you've got green and yellow and and so on and so forth so you have to deal with that you have to deal with your fuel which is on the left you see that big green bar which says charge um you know you have to deal with a lot of stuff and also weight of the uh, cargo you take so right now i'm here at this drill site uh livermore or livermore i'm not sure what it is and um just like usual in trade games we'll see what they have available and where we could sell it for a tidy profit so let's see uh, these guys, what do we have here actually? Available is on the right. Shielded Livermorium containers, some uh, surface G-Wave scanners, and primary, primary Presidomium. I believe the scanners, micro drones, high precision lenses, shielded micro drones, shiver. Oh, these are necessary, yeah. Um, where did they want that? By a radar. It's probably all the way over here. No. Where was it? I'm sure someone over here wanted this uh, surface G-Wave scanners. Of course, I do have to check the weight of these. 
So four tons is about the maximum. My my, I don't quite understand how this works. On the left, you can see on the bottom left, you can see the cargo, and I have zero out of two and zero out of thirteen and a half thousand. So I'm assuming kilograms. So uh, you know, thirteen and a half tons I can carry, but my engines cannot wait even half that. So I think about six tons maybe I could lift. Five tons, uh, no, five tons maybe I could lift. So four tons I think, I think would be the maximum. So I can take any of this. So uh, let me see where we are gonna go. Now you start actually at a, an island over here. All the way over here. So you have to, you know, fly over this ocean. And I'm assuming in the final game there's gonna be lots more, you know, uh, land masses and such. There's a service base. Uh, they want self-contained residential module units. Not here. It's gotta be here then. I don't know, it's gonna micro drones. Really? Nobody wants this. That's a bit disappointing. Oh, wait a wait a second. There we go. Shielded Liverborium container. Or these guys want the container with heavy shielding, micro drones. Alright, let, let's take the shielded Livermorium container then. So we load that up. Where is it? That's odd. <gasps> oh no, I know what's happened here. I know what's happened here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't mind that. The containers are usually where my tail is. But because I had some really bad weather, uh, it was actually a bugged cyclone. Uh, everything was blown over and I was destroyed a couple times, so yeah. Also, the nice thing is when you do load stuff up, it actually shows you on the map which places wanted, so I could have done it like that, I guess. I guess I could go to the uh, beginning island as well, but right now I want to go to the big crater there. Alright, so, using the controller, we will need to go where? The UI is a little bit confusing when you start, and as you can see, I don't actually have enough power. Not really sure how that works. I don't even have enough power to lift three tons? Seriously? Let me try this again. Now, as you can see on this bar that I'm moving now, this is my engine thrust. And that red little dot over there, as you can see that I'm trying to reach this one, this is how much power I need to actually start hovering, let alone take off. So unfortunately, I will have to get rid of this um, stuff. Right now, the game doesn't really do a good job of telling you just how much you can lift. You have to learn that yourself. So uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to taxi over the bloody ground over there. Actually, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. I'm going to pick up a passenger. As you can see, I've got full throttle right now. So, uh, you know, this this is not an arcade game. This is, like it says, a Frontier Pilot Simulator. There's a lot of actually... Ooh, that was close. There's a lot of stuff actually involved here. Uh, drill site north base, okay. Um, you know, there's weather, there's aerodynamics, there's um, weight, there's uh, g-forces, and so on and so forth. It's, it's... I love it. So let's open the back door, or back hatch, or gate, or loading ramp, I guess you could say. Uh, so this guy wants to go to the drill site north. He'll actually tell us that I just have to get rid of my uh on my thingy on the map so uh get yeah, whoops oh no it's doing that again how do I get rid of this do I just oh no <clears throat> see I can play I can place these green targets with the A but I, I used to be able to get rid of them with B but I cannot I cannot get rid of them anymore for some reason no it doesn't work that's quite annoying I'm not sure what happened there. Nope. Anything I do, it doesn't work. Oh well. Unfortunately, um, it's gonna tell us where we need to go anyway. Wait, wait a second. He needs to go to drill side north one. Alright. So we're, we're just gonna have to uh, find it ourselves. There it is. Drill side north one, 51, well, 52 kilometers away. So let's get up here. Let's move forward. As you can see, the engines are very, very agile. You can move in several several directions but now that I have a favorable wind here I'm actually going to change from a VTOL to a cruise mode there we go and I'll press the left stick button in to get permanent I mean 
constant throttle and then adjust it with a left and right trigger, which I think is pretty ingenious. Now, I've seen some people complain about the UI being cluttered and the controls confusing. Now, I will agree. Right at the start, I thought the... Uh, the UI was a bit of a mess as well. There's stuff all over the place. And, you know, there's definitely absolutely room for improvement here. But once you actually start flying a bit and doing missions and trading, you start relying on this UI. Yes, some of the stuff could be placed in a better, um, you know, place. For example, on the extreme right, you can see <clears throat> my rate of climb and my altitude. My rate of climb is the minus 7 right now, which is above the altitude, minus 6 now. And um, if I pitch up, of course, I'm going to go into the positive. Now, that is a very useful thing when I'm flying, because I want to know where the, you know, what my altitude above the sea level and my actual altitude, which is below that, is, and what my rate of climb or descent is. That's very important, so I know that I'm, you know, sort of level, because there's no artificial horizon at the moment. Some sort of artificial horizon or a radar scan uh, would be great, because a lot of the times, as you can see, you fly through clouds, and if I turn this off, right now there's quite good visibility, considering, uh, but a lot of the times you won't really see much, and, you know, I'm flying blind. If there's a mountain I'm flying towards, well, tough luck. And I would definitely like that to have, I don't know, maybe sort of below the ship, somewhere you know, close to the, uh, to the center of the screen, where I can rely on it. But, as I said, once you, once you start flying, you actually see that a lot of this stuff makes a lot of sense that you can use. The speed, maybe, is the only one that's not so useful, unless you start stalling or something. But, of course, you do have a VTOL mode available right away, if you just press X. Um, now, on the left, the leftmost bar, uh, next to my throttle, which I'm adjusting right now, um, is the charge. Now, this is basically my fuel. You don't want that to get too low, or, you know, if it gets to zero, you will crash. So right now, there you go. Oh, well, a bit of visibility again. Um, and then to the right of it, as I said, that's my throttle, which you can see that I've got just above the hover requirement, or, you know, I'm guessing this is so we don't lose altitude. This is uh, just enough power so we can fly. Uh, and, of course, is the most economical. On the right, we've got a bar that has... I actually don't know what those what those two bars are. It, it says speed, but I'm not sure what the other one is, because it has two of those orange bars. I'm not quite sure about that. So, as you can see, I am flying towards a mountain. You can just barely see it. So, uh, some kind of a radar would be brilliant. Some kind of a lighter or something, maybe. I actually am flying towards this stuff here. Now, as I said, the controls are also might be, you know, a little bit confusing at the start, but they are actually, the more you play it, very cleverly laid out. Ooh, I do not want to go towards those, uh, towards exclamation marks, because your ship can experience, in the extreme lower left uh, of the screen, you can see the G-meter. Now, that's um, my, uh, that's the stress the ship is taking. I'm actually going to shut off thrust now and just glide towards the six kilometers away site. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about... I'm not sure. <laughs> so yeah, definitely some UI improvements could be uh, in place. Ooh, that can stress my ship out, that uh, rising air there. Don't think, oh yeah, nice, I can get some free altitude there. Yes, you can, but, you know, it's, it's quite dangerous. So we are losing altitude. I'm going to go into... Uh, VTOL mode, and keep an eye out on my descent rate, which we are descending faster and faster, but I am going to, uh, I'm going to get some power into those engines. Oh yeah, I was talking about the controls. As you can see, once, once you get used to it a little bit, uh, where's the drop-off place? I'm guessing over there. Is it? Oh, I need full power, full power. I was not looking at the descent rate, full power. Oh, that was actually pretty lucky. There we go. Obviously, you want... Oh, he wants out here. All right, that's fine. And he will give us some money. Yeah, the, the controls are actually pretty nice. They are fairly sensitive. You have to be... You have to be careful with this thing. Ooh, 13,000 credits. I like that. You have to be careful because while your ship is 
fairly slow and lumbering while uh, in VTOL mode. You know, the engines are at like 80% or more power all the time just to keep them, uh, just to keep everything hovering. Um, it, is, it is also quite agile if you're too, uh, too happy with the sticks, uh, with the control stick. So, um, while I was flying, I was, you know, while I was uh, trying to turn my ship around, I was taxing, and I, you know, as you can see, the, the turning circle of this ship is not that great. So I was thinking, why can't I just lift off? Let me show you. We're going to go to the trading zone. Here. Why can't I lift off like this? Let's keep it hovering right now. You know, and, and just, just turn around like a tank. And I did this. And of course, whoa, I don't want to go there. So if you, if you turn it just gently, the, the engines will actually only turn you around instead of also strafe you. So that's, it's, it's, you know, you actually get a feeling of achievement that you are getting more and more in control. Where is that landing zone? You're getting more and more in control of your piloting skills and the actual ship, which I think is pretty darn brilliant. And that is why this thing is called... Oh, what? There's already a ship there. Is it going to leave? How do I... How do I trade stuff here? That's not fair. I want to recharge and all that stuff. Oh well. So yeah, um, I love that aspect of the game. In fact, like I said before, I love all aspects of this game. You'd think I was getting paid to say this stuff. I wish I was, but um, no. I If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely adore complex games. Let me actually try to squeeze in here. I know this is not really regulation, um, but uh, I think this is either bugged or they've forgotten that there's a that they placed a ship here so you can't park. Let me see. Uh, uh, full power. Oh, getting so close to that light there. Alright, I have no idea how close I am to the front of that ship. I mean, to the back of that ship. Alright. There. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not in the right place there. Uh. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I can trade here. So we've got... Wait, did I not? Oh yeah, I couldn't even lift this stuff. Look at this. Molding terbium, nine tons. I have to find some <clears throat> some better engines for this. It said I need advanced engines, but I have no idea where to get them. There is an upgrade uh, hangar over there. So let me go and show you this. This is also quite interesting. Oops, let me reset the camera. This is also quite interesting. And you might have noticed that the uh, frames per second, that the frame rate is very, very bad. Now, this is to be expected. Um, you know, I have everything at maximum, but uh, even so, the game is not very well optimized right now. Oh, there's another trading zone there. Okay. So, as you can see, I do need quite a bit of full power here to, uh, to stop myself from smashing into places. But once you get used to it, as you can see... And I don't know how many times I'm going to say, as you can see now, it is quite satisfying to pilot this ship. You know, and, 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 and gl you know, gently glide into an exact place you want it. It's pretty brilliant. And that's why I like that this is a simulator. It's not dumbed down. And I've implored the uh, developers not to dumb it down for the masses as well. This is also quite interesting. When you're uh, when you're here, you can press X to repair for 137 credits. Also, I love the uh, music. It's got a very sort of Firefly Western, uh, you know, Wild West feel. So, I'm going to repair. You think, okay, you know, 137 credits has been uh, deducted and we've been repaired. Let's go. Nope. You have to actually wait. Look. It's repairing the front left and right engines now. Then it's going to the back left and right engines. A cyclone. Hold on, it's going to quake a little. Uh-oh. That's not good. I hate the cyclones. There's way too many cyclones right now. And uh, unfortunately, they are a bit bugged, I think. Because sometimes when you exit the hangar while a cyclone is going on, you just get almost immediately destroyed. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But yeah, for the better or for worse, I think they will have to have a skip button for this uh, for the repair sequence. 
uh, maybe just advance the time or something. But there you go. The repair is now finished and we can actually leave. But in the meantime, you can also queue, you know, upgrades if you wanted. Now, I already have... These guys, these have plus 20% power, but I've got engines that give me minus 50% consumption, which is great for passengers. But I'm assuming that these ones will actually give me more power than these. As you can see, the there's no real actual stats that you would really care about, except the weight of the part. You see 320 and 300 uh, glasses, so I'm assuming that's uh, health, uh, and how much they cost. Uh, but I would like to compare the, you know, power consumption and the actual power of these two engines, but that's not available. So I'm assuming these ones are more, uh, you know, are uh, more powerful. I can also get, uh, oh yeah, I already have this install, which is really um, useless to me, because <laughs> I can't even li lift the original maximum payload. And we've got this rigidity stuff uh, that I could, whoa, this is actually... Double. Wait. Oh no, never mind. Accessory change. Okay, this is even heavier. These uh, these wheels and these ones that I have. So yeah, maybe I should just get rid of this because it's really heavy. But I don't know how much the original originals are. Anyway, uh, let's leave and hopefully the the cyclone won't destroy us. So. The, the whole idea is, you start with a small ship, which was quite agile, I kind of like that one, uh, and then you, you know, you upgrade its engines and chassis and, and wings and so on and so forth, you, uh, you trade with stuff, and uh, then you buy a new ship, which was this one. I don't know if there's any more ships available right now, but um, suffice to say, I love this stuff. This game, you know... <laughs> It's so early in its development. Oh, I'm not even gonna do this turn. And of course, I'll have to change direction there anyway, so... Make sure you always refuel. Why are my... Why are my wheels are already at 88% when I had them repaired? Yeah, that, that will need to be sorted out as well. <clears throat> so, we have to get this landing zone. Later on, hopefully, there will be traffic as well, and traffic control, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's... Ignition, get into a hover mode, and uh, gently turn. As you can see, I'm trying to keep my right trigger just at the hover level. A little less now, because I don't want to go too high. There we go. Ooh, a little bit more. I want to go there. Ooh, got to be a little bit more gentle, as you can see. You cannot lose control here, because... Bad stuff can happen very quickly. There we go. That was a nice landing. Let's just get into place. There we go. It's a bit crooked, but that's alright. So, we can now... Oh yeah, we can't buy this because it's way too heavy. Brilliant. Do we have any passengers here? I don't know. Do we? Doesn't look like it. I hate the fact that this is so heavy. I'm assuming I put too many things on onto the ship, and I can't really, can't really lift anything. I wish my engines were a bit more powerful. Well, let's see. Yeah. Nope. Too heavy. Bit of a shame. Fortunately, though, you can sell this stuff right back for the same amount of uh, money you bought it in the first place. So that's all right. All right. Now, let's go to a different place. Um, let's go to one of the trawlers and buy some food. Actually, no, that food is way too heavy as well. Let's try and find the more powerful engines, shall we? So, I'm assuming they will be at the security place. Where is it? There's a trawlers research security service base. Alright, so that's where I want to go. Uh oh, cyclone! Brilliant, right now. That's that's gonna really help me. Right, let's try to avoid crashing into uh, any of this stuff. Center announcement: Attention, a cyclone is approaching. Yes. All right, let's go to cruise mode. Gotta be careful about my descent rate because every time you go into cruise mode, it does uh, make you drop a little bit. 
because you're not in VTOL anymore. So yeah, a bit dangerous that. Yeah, let's go to the security service base, try to uh, find if they've got the engines available. Otherwise, we'll just have to go to a different place and find them. So anyway. What's that geological scanner doing then? Oh yeah, that was from a mission, which was kind of bugged. So yeah, quite a few bugs, uh, very poor optimization right now. So, you know, if, if you're looking for a more uh, fleshed out experience, I would wait right now. I mean, right now you can already experience the simulation model, which is a lot of fun, I have to say. Um, and, you know, some, some limited trading and such. Uh, but apart from that, and, and of course the weather, but apart from that, you know, wait a little bit. I'm just going to leave the sticks as is, because I don't need to constantly adjust it. The, uh, the ship will sort of level itself out in cruise mode, which is nice. But yeah, just like before in the tech demo, I was super, super uh, excited about this game. And now... See this? I'm, I can barely see any mountains right now. I wonder what happens if you go above the clouds. Is that even possible? Let's go to full power. Try to go above the clouds. Let's see what happens. Oh! Okay, it cut my throttle. Why did that happen? Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, radar broke down. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is not good. I don't know why that's happening here. Oh. We are buzzing with electricity and now dropping like a bloody stone. Alright, so I guess that's that's how they do it. Oh no, my radar is gone. Are we still going the right way? I think it's gonna get fixed in a little bit. Okay, so if you go too high, there's like electrical storms or something. There we go. So yeah, I am still very, very excited about this game. There you go. See anything? See any mountains? Me neither. So if they are there, we're in trouble. Uh, but I just love the idea of this. You know, uh, uh, almost a, like a Wild West pilot in the future with a ship like Malcolm Reynolds from uh, Firefly. Um, I hope I'm hoping there's gonna be smuggling as well. I'm hoping there's gonna be you know very remote villages where people are trying to eke out a, a living with I don't know farming or something. There's also trawlers here that that catch some sort of eels or something I believe for food. Um, I love the idea and the the simulation aspect is pretty awesome. It's not a all right let's lift off uh, press this button to hover and press this button for autopilot. No, you have to really take care and the and the another thing is when you do load up something when you do load up cargo it has a certain fragility level is that even a word fragility i guess it is so if something is very fragile you better watch in the lower left corner that g meter if you're going to do some crazy maneuvers or get into some very bumpy air there's a very you know good chance you're going to damage or even destroy what you have on board i believe there are upgrades that uh, can dampen out stuff for that um so that's pretty exciting as well and what i think i like most about this is like i said it's not arcade when you're when you're landing and you're like okay full power we're just gonna you know stop our descent rate from minus three thousand to zero in a in half a second no even if you're at like minus 20 and very close to the ground uh oh you're in trouble at full power with, with you know if you're loaded uh, it's gonna take a while for you to stop. So, in essence, you are piloting a space freighter, pretty much, which it, which is what it is. It is a space freighter. Or, you know, I don't know if it'll be possible to go into space. I think this is mostly a uh, atmospheric uh, ship. But you can see we're being thrown about because of this uh, air. Uh, in a cyclone, it's really bad. Uh, and these uh, engines that have minus 50% I think it was minute minus 50% right consumption are very nice as you can see my ch I still have a lot of charge some people have complained in the forums that uh, you use up your fuel way too quickly which is kind of true without these upgraded um, economical engines you can get from one place to another you know with just a smidge of fuel remaining it's it's a little bit nerve-wracking but 
then I thought about it. Wait a second, that's actually kind of clever. Because you have to be clever with what you do. Because you're hauling heavy stuff, you have to do it economically. And, uh, you know, right now, as you can see, I'm reducing power even more. There you go. Uh, you know, you don't just fly at full power at all, on all time, at all times in this game, because you will run out and you will crash. Now, right now, if you crash, you just automatically uh, fly back to the nearest base. So I could crash here and it'll fly me to the security service base. There will be no repercussions um, with money and such. I'm assuming that's going to be changed later on with insurance and such. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, it's on the other side of this mountain. When we're about three clicks away, I'm going to uh, cut the power. Probably. Actually, hmm. I'm going to reduce power now. Yeah, okay. We're, we're, go, we're going into VTOL mode. To slow down. And uh, don't need that much power. Ooh. Oh, there's... Oh, no, no, no. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Not, not good. Not good. See, this, this stuff is not good. Oh... Engine stabilizer is damaged. Full power, please. Full power. Full power. Not good. Not good. Full power. Oh. And boom. Well, that was that. That's my other complaint. It's sometimes a little bit... Because of all these clouds and everything, it's uh, very difficult to find and see the very dangerous areas soon enough. Um... There was really nothing I could have done there. I was moving too quickly, I think, uh, to do anything. I'm, maybe I could have uh, stopped and gone the other way, but oh well. At least we're here. Ooh, that's weird. Oh yeah, that's another bug. Things go transparent for some reason. Not really sure why that happens. But we'll see if engines are available here. And uh, if they are, we'll get them happily. So we can actually lift more stuff. Let's see. Consumption minus 50... Rigidity, air drag, force, capacity, battery protection. I don't want any of this stuff. I want power. <sighs> but it's only plus 20%. That's nothing. I need the advanced ones. That's not nice. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you do want to support the developer and the development of this game, go and buy it on Steam. Right now, as I said, it's a bit expensive for what it offers still. But uh, if they're going to continue developing it like this, I think this is going to be one of the most fun games in quite a while. At least for me. As I said, I've, I've been playing this for a couple of hours already and it's just, it's just a very, very early buggy access game. And uh, I was enjoying myself almost quite a bit more than some of the AAA games that have disappointed me. So there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the frontier then. Bye bye.